I know some of you are saying, I wish that were true. I really wish that were true. There's only love. Because you see two worlds now, so it doesn't seem to be true. It seems to be that love is contingent on hate, that, that uh, health is contingent on sickness, that up is contingent on down. It's not that way. God is not a contingency. God is real, and it's the only reality of you, and that's what we're teaching here, singularity. There's one power and one presence active in the universe and in my life. That's the power of love. If God is love, just switch the words around. We're not here to worship God. We're here to be what we were created to be. An example, an expression of love. And if God is love, then we're an example, an expression of God. It's not separate from us. We've heard this repeated many times. And we've heard it written about. And we've heard this very true statement spoken of. And we use it in our prayers. But what what does it really mean to those of us involved in spiritual science? This week we're going to explore this idea that God is love. We're going to explore how that principle of love is showing up for us in our life. We're going to explore how we can access the principle of love. And we're going to explore how we can demonstrate God's love in our lives, and in our world. Sound like fun? All right, let's do it. Because in unity we believe that in order to manifest the truth, we must first claim the truth. We must first claim it for ourselves. We must first understand it by repeating it intellectually, but we have to claim it by actioning it in our lives. And so let's repeat this affirmation. I am the love of God in action. We're going to repeat it three times. Are you ready? I am the love of God in action. I am the love of God in action. I am the love of God in action. So the next time somebody says, what do you do? Who are you? What are you? I am the love of God in action. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> According to Myrtle Fillmore, it's very personal. It's personal and it's universal at the same time. It presents us a a seeming paradox. But what I love about Myrtle Fillmore and Charles Fillmore, the co-founders of Unity, is that they were teaching singularity way before it was popular. They started in the 1890s. We're just catching up now. It's 2019. Can you believe that? Every year I go, I can't believe it. (laughs) 2019, that's a lot of years. I finally am reading Myrtle Fillmore. (laughs) Took me a long time, but listen to this. It's from her book, How to Let God Help You. And it's chapter four. It's the chapter on spiritual science. We are studying spiritual science to get a broader conception of God rather than holding to the view that he is a personal being with parts like a man, a being subject to change and varying moods. Though personal to each one of us, God is it, principle, neither male nor female. But God is not a cold and emotionless principle like that of mathematics, but the principle of life, love, and intelligence. God is all intelligence. There is but one mind in reality. There are no separate men and women. A full realization of this great truth would do away with selfishness, the cause of all misery on planet Earth. Now, I don't know when this was written exactly, but I know it was way before I was born. There's one mind in reality. This is something that is a great universal truth. It didn't just appear in the 60s. It didn't just appear last week. It didn't just appear 50 years ago. 
It didn't just appear with Charles and Myrtle Fillmore. It didn't just appear with Jesus Christ. It's a universal truth that happens to be true since the beginning of time. And we're discovering it when we discover it. So why don't you discover it today for yourself? There's but one mind. There are no separate men and women. The great realization of this truth will do away with all selfishness, which Myrtle Fillmore claims is the cause of all misery on planet Earth. And I happen to agree with her. Selfishness is the cause of our misery. Giving, oneness, loving your neighbor as yourself, that is the cause of all healing on planet Earth. Knowing that whatever I give to you, I'm giving to myself. That whatever I give away, that's the only thing I get to keep. Because now that I've given it to you, I can see it manifest in action. Before that, it's just an idea. It's just an emotion. It's just something within my own consciousness, in my own mind. But I can't really see it until I've given it away. You are the mirror for what's going on within me. That's why we have each other, brothers and sisters. That's why we have each other, to know who I am, to get a clear indication of where I am in my mind. And to know that when I am living in the principle of love, I'm going to see it in you. I'm going to see it everywhere. I'm going to see it in the world. I'm going to see it in the darkest places. So she goes on to say something very interesting here. The momentous question is, how can man, woman, come into harmony with this principle of love? How can we come into harmony with this principle? The answer is simply this, by recognizing that in his, her, real inner self, the human being is an expression of, of principle is an expression of God's love. And that seeming sick, sickness, death are not real. You know, every time I have to do a memorial, every time that we're at a funeral, every time we do a celebration of life, what does everyone there say? Death is not real. What does all the readings and the poems and all of the celebration of that per- person's life come bring you to that one point that life is eternal, that life goes on. Why don't we believe that right here and right now that all of it is a temporary illusion, that the reality of us is eternal, is God. This is an, a universal truth that the Fillmores are teaching or were teaching, are still teaching through their writings and through unity through thousands of unity churches around the country and the world. We're so grateful to be part of this, but it's a universal truth. It's something that we must learn to action in our lives. I'm going to go back a little further to 1 John chapter 4, which is an amazing it's, it's the most amazing writing that God is love. It says God is love several times. But it also will say that God's love is perfected in us. We won't know that God is love until it's perfected in our living. That's, that's the greatest part, is that we get to do it. This is God is love, but I'm a miserable sinner. You know, we're not teaching that. We're not teaching heaven and hell. We're teaching there is only love. We're teaching there is only heaven. Oh my goodness, I can't understand that. There's no hell, there's no evil, there's no bad. Well, all of those things are happening within a timely uh, view of the world that you have. But if you want peace on earth, it has to begin with me. That's the song we sing every single week. I have to stop blaming the world for how I feel, how I am, what I experience. The view of myself is simply my view. And by practicing universal truth, principle, I will have 
a greater view of myself. That God's love is perfected in me because greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. So you have a, a, a guy walking around in the world and you pretend that's you. And 99% of the time, you're pretending that that's who you are. But there's one within you that is greater than the one you're pretending to be. And as you discover that one within you, that is how God's love is perfected in us. So another person who truly believed this, we're celebrating tomorrow. It's a national holiday, right? Martin Luther King Day. Awesome. So here we are. We're dwelling in love. I forgot to put that up for you. <laughs> we're dwelling in love, and we're living in an ocean of love, an abundance of which we cannot fail. This is the only endeavor which will not fail. You cannot make any mistakes, because every little bit of love you offer to the world is there forever, has changed the consciousness of the world forever. You can't go back to old ways. Once your mind has been stretched by new ideas, it's not going to return to its original dimensions. It's Oliver Wendell Holmes. So here's, here's another way of expressing it from the Eastern tradition. Love is the only reality. It's not a mere sentiment. It is the ultimate truth that lies at the heart of creation. So today we are speaking about the ultimate truth. Not a lot of separate truths. This is the ultimate truth, that love is reality. It's the only reality. If we can get that in our minds and get that in our hearts, we'll never be afraid again. Forget all the other stuff that's going on. You're already healed. You're already whole. You're already perfect. And your body will catch up to it. Just remember that. It, it, it's happening now. I can see it. It's amazing how the mind affects the body. When we think that love is our only reality, guess what? Things start happening very fast. You speed things up. So all the other stuff that we think about is error thinking. In unity, we call it an error, not a sin. It's a mistake. It's an error. And so error thinking... Error does not become the truth because you multiply it, because you say it over and over again. It's still not the truth. Well, it's showing up for me. I've been sick and sad and all blah, 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 blah. Your whole story, right? The world this and the world that and the politics this and the blah, 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 blah. Right? And then I'm sad, I'm sick, I'm sad. And you tell yourself that story over and over again, but it doesn't make it true. Guess what? It doesn't make it true by reason of propagation. Nor does the truth become error because you don't see it. He was a pretty smart guy, Mahatma Gandhi. He, he invent, I put him up here because he invented, he and Jesus Christ invented nonviolence. And Martin Luther King followed the teachings of Gandhi. But he was the first, he's the first one to really demonstrate it fully in his lifetime. Oh, there's another famous guy, the Dalai Lama. What's he saying about love? Oh, the only true religion consists of having a good heart. You don't need religions and churches and anything, philosophies. You know, just be kind to one another. Kindness is my religion. Kindness should be our religion. Just have a good heart. That's all you really need. I mentioned this last week. I wanted to bring this back because Lao Tzu was the teacher, uh, one of the teachers of Wayne Dyer. And I mentioned that we truly are radically including everyone in our love. And it's very important to do so. Because if we want to awaken humanity, we have to awaken ourselves. That's the way we do it. Not by judging others, but by loving them. And if you want to eliminate all the suffering in the world, we have to eliminate all that is dark and negative in ourselves. And that's our mission. That's, that's our goal. That's our purpose. That is my 
job every day to eliminate all that is dark and negative within myself. Because the greatest gift you, you have to give to this world is the gift of your own self-transformation. Your healing is a gift to all of humanity, to all of the world. Think of it that way. When you are healed, you're not healed alone. And you pass on your healing to people you've never met before. A bird with a broken wing begins to fly again. A stream that was long dry begins to flow again. Because you are healed. As you come back to living, to life, to full recognition that you are the love of God, you're healing people all over the world that you've never met. Because why? We are one. There's one mind, one heart, one soul, one being. So here's Martin Luther King. Are you ready for this guy? I got to tell you, the, the, the stuff that people don't read that he said is more important than the stuff <laughs> that, that, you know, like darkness can't drive out darkness, only light can do that. Love can't drive out hate, only, only love, I mean, hate can't drive out hate, only love can do that. Of course, those are famous, but he was a very deep thinker and he followed the thought, only love can drive out hate, and backed it up with a lot of, good scripture, philosophy, and life experience by opening our lives to God and Christ. Well, what does that mean? We become new creatures. What does it mean to God in Christ? All that really means is that I'm walking around as the Christ. I am in God. If you're in the realization that that principle is what you are, bam, you're Christ. We're new creatures. It's not something outside of us. These aren't, you know, God's not a man. Come on, let's get it, get it in our head. That God is principle, spirit, everywhere, everything, way beyond my imagination and my conception. God is so much bigger, so much greater. I can't put it into a, a small package. I can't make God in my image. I have to be made in that image. What we've done is reverse it. We've made a big mistake. But this experience which Jesus spoke of as the new birth is essential if we are to be transformed nonconformists. What a wonderful idea. Transformed nonconformists. So only through an inner spiritual transformation do we gain the strength to fight vigorously the evils of a world, but in a humble and loving spirit. Humble and loving spirit. Isn't that amazing? I've tried it the other way. It doesn't work. I end up hurting myself. I end up becoming just as hateful and and vengeful as, as the people I'm judging. Lily and I, and you know, God, God bless her. <laughs> because, you know, she married somebody that really is out to change the world. <laughs> and, and I have a passion about it. And everything I do, I have that passion behind it. There's an idea that, that what we're doing today is going to be so important. It's going to change the world. And so I've got this incredible fire each and every day when I wake up. And it's like I'm, I'm, I wake up sort of raging at the universe. <laughs> you know, and, and the, minute, the minute I start to slip into judgment, she'll say, they're doing the best they can at the level of consciousness they have at that moment. And I remember something very important, that so am I. I'm doing the best I can at the level of consciousness I have at this moment. So let's raise the consciousness. Let's raise my consciousness today. That, that gets me immediately back into practice. Oh, what's the lesson of the day? What's the daily word? What's the lesson in the Course in Miracles? Right back to practice. Right back to practice. 
center, meditation, connection, love of God. That's what I am. Now I'm seeing everybody again from that point of view. It's so easy to get yourself back when you're focused on yourself first. When I say, oh, okay, I don't, I don't want to say that about myself. Whenever you're complaining about somebody, just pretend you're talking to yourself. Like, it's so cool. It's so funny. <laughs> like you're watching the news and you're yelling at them, shut the TV off, go in front of the mirror and say the same stuff. <laughs> you will quickly find out how you're hurting yourself. <coughs> so Dr. King, he's an amazing guy. See, and he's talking about transformation, just like Lao Tzu and just like unity and our, our vision and mission. So we have, if, if we are to have peace on earth, our loyalties have to be transcendent. Our loyalties have to transcend our race, our tribe, our class, our nation. I would say all of your personal ideas about yourself, your personality, your ego, whoever you think you are in separation. You have to transcend that. And this means you must develop not only a world perspective that he says, but a universal perspective. We must develop a universal perspective. We must take into consideration that we are one with everything. Every being on earth and everything in the universe. All the energies, all the, the ideas of love, all the, the perfection. You know, the universe is a, is a powerful, energetic, moving system. It's alive. And we have to be alive to join in with it, don't we? We have to be alive. We have to actually put ourselves in there. We can't just view it as an objective thing out there that, that we can have an effect on or it has an effect on us. It's not like that. It's not really cause and effect. Einstein proved that everything's happening all the time, right? All time's going on when? Now. now. Now's the only moment we have. We've been saying these things for a long time. But I think something that even Dr. King probably began to experience was his necessity to experience God now, to be the love of God now, to be God's love in action. And this is what he called us to do. And that is an active and very dedicated practice. He practiced nonviolence, like Mahatma Gandhi. But nonviolence means avoiding not only external violence, but also internal, violence of spirit, your own spirit. Don't do violence to your spirit. I find that that's where my deepest um, growth edge is right now, to stop complaining and fighting with myself, to stop telling myself about the world out there, to start healing and, and, or to continue healing and harmonizing the inner being. That's the most important place because you not only refuse to kill a man, to shoot a man, but you refuse to hate him. I'm not going to hate him. I'm going to see that he's doing the best he can at the level of consciousness he has now. And so am I. Remember that part. And so am I. So Dr. King says we have a glorious opportunity before us to inject a new dimension of love into the veins of our civilization, into all the world. This is the opportunity that we have. Don't view it as something else. Don't view it as something gone wrong. View it as now the opportunity has been made, it's come to my awareness. I have been made aware of the, of the real opportunity that I have in this moment. An opportunity to what? Inject a new dimension of love into the veins of our society, of our civilization, of this community, of every community. We're injecting through spiritual practice of principle a new dimension of love. Love yourself. 
just the way you are. And get on with it. Get on with your life. Get on with the idea that I can do this. Because you can. You can inject that new dimension of love. Of course, we never had it before. That's why it's a new dimension, right? No, we haven't experienced it in the past. It's because it's a new dimension, guys. That's why. And we're going to inject it into the veins of our civilization. And this is seeming paradox that in divine science that truth, this principle, is both personal and universal at the same time. It applies to both heaven and earth. And it functions in the absolute realm and in the relative realm simultaneously. That's the seeming paradox that you must learn to get over, to accept. Yes, all is perfect, and I am progressing. We often say that I am both a masterpiece and a work in progress at the same time. I am God's masterpiece, and it's happening both in the absolute and the relative realm, heaven and earth. It's universal and it's personal. It's so darn personal at the same time. But one thing that it's not is ambiguous. These truths are immutable. They're unequivocal and they are not ambiguous. They are equally applicable to everyone, to all human beings at any time, at any place. Truth is immutable. It's unequivocal and it's equally available to each one of us at all times. The challenge will always be to demonstrate the truth of God's love being perfected in us. It's not going to be perfected out there. It's being perfected in us. Always remember that you are called to be the evidence of God's love in action here on earth. You are being called to be the evidence of God's love in action. So remember to repeat to yourself, I am God's love in action. Patricia called me the other day and says, what are you doing? I'm being God's love in action. She goes, woohoo, so am I. (laughs) That's why you need to get prayer partners. (laughs) And she says, we say that every day on our prayer call. 7.45, a little early for me to be on the phone. But (laughs) I'll be saying it with you. (laughs) Because... I am God's love in action, and so are you. So be blessed, my friends, and be a blessing. Thank you for being here today. You have been watching the message from our Sunday celebration service here at Unity on Cape Cod, providing a positive path for spiritual living. Please join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at 147 Walton Ave, Hyannis, Mass. And visit us online at www.unityoncapecod.org.